ready. The Greenies have been sounding the alarm on energy. They say it's only a matter of time before we run out of fossil fuels. But thanks to new technology, we are dramatically increasing oil and gas production. For example, pumping out an extra 790,000 barrels of oil a day just last year. Robert Bryce, he's our expert on energy, and he joins us now. Robert, um, give me some more numbers, please, because I'm intrigued at the idea that we're not running out of oil and gas. We've got a mountain of the stuff. Go. Uh, sure, Stuart. Thanks. Um, well, what's remarkable, uh, Stuart, is just in 2005, we had the chairman of ExxonMobil, Lee Raymond, saying that uh, that gas production had peaked in North America. And now look what's happened. We've had the shale gas revolution. The U.S. is looking at exporting large amounts of natural gas uh, via uh, LNG. Uh, as you pointed out, the EIA reported on Valentine's Day uh, domestic oil production up by 790,000 barrels last year. That's the biggest increase since they started keeping records back in 1859. And this year, the EIA expects uh, oil production in the U.S. to rise by another 800,000 barrels a day, which will set yet another record. If we went gung-ho with this new technology, and by that I mean let's go get what's ours, <clears throat> could we produce an extra two million barrels of oil a day? Could we? Well, it, it, that's a good point. Uh, good question, Stuart. Uh, if you look at some of the recent reports from Citigroup and others, uh, they're estimating that U.S. oil production could, within the next five years, surpass that of Russia and Saudi Arabia, which is really just, yeah, I mean, it, it boggles my mind, and I study this stuff all the time, but for the U.S. to outproduce the Saudis is truly incredible. But to do that, you've got to get regulatory approval. You've got to have the politicians, the powers that be, you've got to have them on your side, right? Well, that's true, but look at all the production that's happening on private land. I know there's a lot of hue and cry about federal lands and federal waters, but the reality is that the production on private land and in, and in, and in the offshore is astonishing. Look at what we've seen just last month, Stuart. Both Anadarko and Chevron announced huge discoveries in the Gulf of Mexico in the lower tertiary trend. We're talking about billions of barrels of oil uh, on wells that were drilled in, in about, uh, uh, what, 6,000 feet of water and then drilled another five miles below the mud line. I mean, these are incredible technological achievements that uh, would have been impossible to even conceive of maybe three, four decades ago. It's extraordinary stuff. I, I just want to bring your attention to uh, a, a headline in the Wall Street Journal, an op-ed sure. by the chief executive of a wind company. His name is Patrick Genvine. His, his headline right. is, wind power subsidies, question mark, no thanks. He's saying uh, if, if Washington sent less money to the wind industry, it would be good for the wind industry. He, he doesn't want these subsidies. What do you say to that? It it was a remarkable op-ed, and I was really pleased to read it, Stuart, because he made a couple of really key points in that op-ed. For instance, he said that the subsidies are distorting the market and they're being paid out regardless of the productivity of the wind turbines that are being stalled, installed, which is just an astounding fact. Um, he also said that because of the subsidies, the wind turbines in many areas are being put up in areas that where the wind resources aren't as good. It's just another example of how these subsidies and mandates are distorting distorting the market and leading to uh, uh, suboptimal, or in some cases, just bad outcomes. But the president shows no sign of reversing course on green energy. He wants, I think, $12 billion worth of subsidies this fiscal year for the green energy industry, and he shows no sign of reversing course, despite the op-ed in the, in the Wall Street Journal and the facts that you've just brought to the table. Well, it, it is remarkable, but look at what's happening in the marketplace, Stuart. Look at Fisker Automotive, the, the company that got uh, 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 loan guarantees from the federal government. They're looking at bankruptcy. Look at, at all the other electric vehicle makers that are now in deep trouble. Uh, why? Because there's no consumer pull. We've had a lot of, of government push via subsidies, but the consumers aren't buying it. So, I, you know, I, I'm hopeful and I believe that the market is going to simply uh, will win out. It always does. All right. Yes, it, it all eventually it always does. Robert Bryce, you're, you're <laughs> eventually, right. Eventually. Thanks, Robert. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks uh, so much.